Hi, and welcome to LifeWay's online service for December 25th of 2021. Merry day after Christmas uh, to you. I pray that you had a blessed celebration, and I pray that you were the light uh, to all your friends and family that you were able to spend time with, because the light always beats the darkness, and Jesus came to be the light of the world. So let's pray before we get into our message. We're going to conclude our short three uh, time three-part series to An Inconvenient Christmas. We're going to look at Simeon and Anna, who uh, weren't inconvenienced by a long trip, as Joseph and Mary were, and as the Magi were. The uh, Simeon and Anna were kind of inconvenienced, although it certainly doesn't seem like they showed it, saw it that way. I think we might have, but uh, just constant waiting in the temple, a constant waiting uh, for the promises that they had re received. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for the um, just the example, Lord, of Simeon and Anna, who two wonderful saints who had hearts for you, had hearts for your people, and just waited uh, expectantly for the promise that you had made for them. And uh, so we just love you. Just uh, pray that as we uh, end up this, end this year and look forward to a new one, that you will be our, our lead and our guide. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. 
Welcome back. And before we get into the message, just a, a quick reminder, uh, if you would like to make a contribution to Lifeway Baptist Church, you can do so at our giving page, www.lifewaychurchvista.com. Uh, checks can be mailed to our church office, Lifeway Baptist Church, 1120 Highland Drive, Vista, California, 92083. Uh, as we've looked at the last couple of weeks, uh, uh, <clears throat> people had predictions that Christmas 2021 would be ruined uh, because of the pandemic, which has accelerated in terms of the Omicron uh, variant uh, in just in the last week or so because of inflation, uh, because of supply shortages, uh, because of all those things that we usually associate having a wonderful Christmas with. But if your hope is in Jesus, uh, then you can't uh, have your hope diminished, regardless of what the shelves look like. Um, as the Bible says, and as we've looked at the last couple of times, life doesn't always work out like we plan. Proverbs 16, 9 says, In his heart a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. Um, and that was true for Joseph and Mary. That was true for the Magi. And it's true for uh, Simeon and Anne as well. And uh, the, the, the characters in this little three-part series, they're the hardest to know what their plans were. Uh, but their call clearly was to wait for God's promises. The scripture reading is Luke 2, 21 through 40. Uh, the heart of their, their story is, can be found in uh, Psalm 40, verse 1, which says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he heard my cry. 
um, the inconvenience for Simeon and Anna wasn't a long trip. It was a long wait. So uh, Luke 2, 21 through 40 says, On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that, Spirit, that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dis dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The children's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the, hearts of, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, the tribe of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law, of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. They waited for a long time, but God heard their cry. And what a beautiful that story is of obedience and of worship and of just trust in God and uh, seeing the promises fulfilled. Now, to start with, we want to look in, that in this passage, we see three events in the life of Jesus that are recorded, that are Old Testament biblical. First is the circumcision of Jesus. Luke 2, 21 says, On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. Uh, on the eighth day, the boy is to be circumcised. That's what the law says in Leviticus 12, 3. And Joseph and Mary were um, trusting God and abiding by the law. So, on the eighth day, they took him, and he was given the name that he had been told, uh, that, that they had been told by the angel they were to name him Jesus, for he would save his people for their sins. The second event is the purification of Mary. In Leviticus 12, 4, it says, Then the woman must wait 33 days to be purified from her bleeding. She must not touch anything sacred or go to the sanctuary until the days of her purification are over. So, um we see that uh, Mary had to wait the, 30, the 33 days, just like all the other mothers. So this is a different event than when Jesus went and was circumcised. In Luke 2, uh, 22, it says, At When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So again, they're doing things according to the law as recorded in what we call the Old Testament, uh, what uh, the the Jew the Jewish religion is refers to their Bible as the Tanakh. Number three, there's the presentation of the firstborn son. If you go back to the story of Exodus, you know that um, the the Passover is about the angel of, of death passing over, where blood was over the doorpost. Uh, the angel of death passed over, and um, and so the the firstborn had to be consecrated to the Lord, and this is. Uh, spoken of in Exodus chapter 13, verse 2, where it says, Consecrate to me every firstborn male. The first offspring of every womb among the Israelites belongs to me, whether man or animal. Consecrate to me every firstborn male. 
Luke 2, 23 through 24 says, As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. And so the, Joseph and Mary again fulfilled everything that the law had said. And so as they're going to do this during this event in the temple, Mary and Joseph meet two unique and godly individuals. Uh, the first that we're going to talk about is Simeon. Simeon was named for one of the um, uh, tribes of Israel. Uh, one was uh, named after Simeon. And we read in Luke 2, 25 through 28, we learn some things about this man, Simeon. It says, Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous, righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, and we'll get into what he said, but first let's just look at who Simeon is, uh, who we see here. Uh, he was uh, righteous and devout. Boy, I'd like to have that on my resume. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, not just waiting for God to move, but for the really big thing, for the consolation of Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him. Uh, it had been revealed to him by the Spirit he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now think about that. We're living in a time where we have a promise that Jesus is coming back. But to say, for me to say, well, he's, I'm going to see Jesus come back, that would be uh, pretty audacious for me to say that on my own. Uh, believing that I have figured out um, <laughs> the day and the hour, which you know the Bible says no one's going to know. Uh, but here, man, what a what an awesome thing, uh, and what a blessing from God to Simeon to have that promise, and that what was on his heart so much that day after day, it appears from what we read here, he went into the temple courts, and so I can just see it's like the anticipation that he has every child that comes in to be dedicated, could this be the one? And then when he sees uh, Jesus, he knows that he's the one. Um, I, I, love, I love that. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When his parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory for your people, Israel. So here we have, we see what uh, um, his response is. Uh, I've done what you told me to do, God. I have been faithful, and uh, you, you have promised. So now dismiss your servant in peace. And I read that the word dismiss there is very much like a, a military term. You know, you're dismissed, dismissed. Uh, in Acts, it says David served God's purpose in his generation, and then he died. What a great thing to have on your resume. I was here as long as I needed to be to fulfill what God called me to be, and then my time was up. Dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people. And he looks at the, the two levels of that. First, the glory of your people Israel. But even in this uh, uh, far away place, before Jesus has even started his ministry on earth, uh, he says, a revelation to the Gentiles. Uh, so it covers both uh, the Jews and the Gentiles, and how beautiful that is for Simeon. Um, and the response that, that Joseph and Mary have, the child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Um, I think it's been noted that perhaps Simeon said this to Mary because he knew that Joseph wasn't going to be around uh, when Jesus began his public ministry. And most of that is something, you know, this, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. Wow, that's pretty heavy duty, holding this little baby or looking into this little baby's eyes and, and seeing the destiny that he has. And then a sword will pierce your own soul 
too. Um, we've done, uh, we don't do baby baptisms because we don't believe that's biblical at our church, but we do baby dedications. I just think how hard it would be holding a baby to look in the mother's eye and say, and a sword will pierce your, your own soul too. Well, that's not why I'm dedicating him. That's not uh, um, why I brought him up here to, to, to be dedicated. Tell me the, the good stuff. Tell me, you know, we're consecrating him. He's the Lord's. Well, if he's the Lord's, then the Lord's will be done. And Mary had to receive those words. And a sword will pierce your soul too. The second person that we meet here is Anna. Uh, Anna also, like Simeon, uh, we don't know how, if or how much they knew each other, but they had a, kind of a similar calling. Anna was an Israelite of the tribe of Asher. She was a prophetess. Uh, she was an elderly widow, at least 84 years old. We know that because of what the, what the scripture that I read says about how old she was after she got married and how long she had been a widow in that. And it says, day and night she was in the temple fasting and praying like Simeon was looking for uh, the coming of Messiah. Um, she put uh, feet to her prayers. She, she went to the temple, she fasted, she prayed. She didn't say, well, I wanna see the Messiah. She was actively participating in that. And what the scripture says about her, says coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all um, who were looking for the, forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Uh, Simeon had talked about the consolation of Israel. With Anna, it's looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Then in verse 39, it says, When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. When the child grew and became, and the child grew and became strong, he was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. So just what a beautiful picture of everything being done right according to God's law. It says, when Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to the town, to their own town of Nazareth. And uh, one of my favorite, not often mentioned on a Christmas card, but one of my favorite nativity um, uh, verses, Galatians 4, 4 and 5, but when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Uh, when the time had fully come, and you know, some people wonder uh, <laughs> why Jesus would come at that time, the, the opera, rock opera, I guess it is, Jesus Christ Superstar, one of the lines is, why did you choose such a backward time in such a strange land? Well, the Bible says the time had fully come. Uh, another translation says, in the fullness of time, God sent his son. This was the perfect time. He was born of a woman, Mary, which we've read about. He was born under the law, and we see how meticulous Joseph and Mary were in fulfilling the law. The purpose of his coming was to redeem those under the law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. So because everything was done right, we have the right to be called sons of God. Just think, we may be as close to the second coming of Simeon and Anna, uh, of Christ, as Anna and Simeon were to his first coming. How much do we look like Simeon and Anna looking for uh, the first coming? Uh, they were watchful. Are we watchful? They were in the right place. Are we in the right place? They were ministering the temple. We should be ministering where God called us to be. They were doing the right thing. They were faithful to the Lord. They were praying with the right attitude. You see the humility and expectancy in their prayers. And they were looking for the right person. Who are we looking for, looking for uh, to save us, to lead us, and to guide us? Um, the Spirit was on Simeon. Is the Spirit on us, leading us? If, if, if the Spirit is, then we can trust that we will be in just the right place at just the right time, and all of God's promises to us will be fulfilled. Are you ready for Christ's second advent? The Lord rewards those who look for the coming Messiah. We see the reward of Simeon and Anna was they got to see the promise they, they had received fulfilled. They got to look into Jesus' eyes. They got to be used by the Holy Spirit and bring encouragement. What about us? Are we in that place? Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 8 says, Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, not only to me, but also to all who have longed 
for his appearing. Hebrews 9, 28 says, So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Are you waiting for him? If there's anything we don't want, any time we don't want to be caught unaware, it's uh, the event of Jesus' coming. And the author of Hebrews says he will bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Simeon and Anna waited for Je the baby Jesus to come to the temple and be dedicated. We are waiting for the victorious Jesus, the one who paid for our sins and conquered death to return. And we need to be ready for him to come. Like Simeon and Anna, we must be watchful. Watchfulness requires obedience. Uh, they were both obedient to the calling they had received. Watchfulness requires worship. Uh, because if we're not worshipful, we lose sight of the promises. We lose sight of what we're doing. If we don't serve a God who's worthy of our worship, then, then why are we even doing what we're doing? And watchfulness requires service to God while you are watching. Um, it's like you see them and their heart of worship and uh, just being obedient and being in the temple. What a beautiful picture. And I hope the picture of Simeon and Anna reflects us as well. If you have questions about today's message, you'd like to talk to me about anything, including what it means to be a believer, uh, to be saved, uh, then please contact me at www.lifewaychurchvista.com, and I'll be happy to correspond with you. There's a, a place you can go and leave me a message there at our website. Heavenly Father, thank you for the example of Simeon and Anna, for their watchfulness, for their faithfulness, and just pray, Lord that we will be found watching and waiting when you return. When Jesus went into heaven the first time, the angels who were there said, why do you stand there watching? He will return just as he left. Uh, the point is not if we're watching, but it's are we busy about the kingdom business that God has called us to. I pray that you are. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Okay, thanks for joining me, and we will see you again next time.